just want to make sure that our recordings are on. Just give me one second. So today's the 9th of November, 2010. It's now on my watch, 2.44 a.m. Um, you're in a room right now that's uh, video being video and audio recorded. This is a digital audio recorder. And the reason I have that there is um, it's more of a fail-safe that if something was to happen to the video system and recording that I have another, it may not be a video, but I have a digital audio recording of what we're, we're going to speak to speak about. Um, we're again, we're at 5 District. I want to go through a form with you. It may seem kind of, you know, why you're doing this, but um, this is a, it's, it's like you're, you're swearing to tell the truth about what you're going to talk to me about. And it's also going to explain to you the, um, the penalties for not telling the truth. I don't expect you not to help me, but for a homicide investigation, anyone who's very close to the investigation, we do this with. Okay, so this isn't suspecting that you're not going to tell the truth. This is more of a feature that you understand the importance of telling the complete truth. Okay, as much as I can remember. that's all I ask for. But so this form. Please don't take it personal, okay? But it's something we go through with everyone, okay? If you have any questions about the form, so I'm going to read this form to you. Then someone's going to come in here with either a Bible or a firm, whatever your choice is, that whatever you tell will be the truth, okay? And then from that point, I'm going to go on and we're going to ask questions, okay? So, First off, I want you to uh, identify identify yourself. Speak loudly. There are uh, there are mics in here. I just now with the, this is a new room for me. I don't know where they are, but I need to hear a nice clear voice. So if you can identify yourself for me. My name is Jennifer Pan. Can you spell your last name, Jennifer? P A N Pan. Pan. Okay. Do you understand that everything um, that is being said in this room is being videotaped, audio recorded, and digitally audio recorded? Yes. I would like, um, I ask you to introduce yourself, which you already have, and that you consent to this uh, tape uh, being made. Uh, my name is Randy Slade. I introduce myself to you at the hospital. My badge number is 531, and I'm a member of the York Regional Police Homicide Unit. Uh, monitoring this statement right, right here in the next room, okay, is uh, Trevor Byard. His badge number is 1446. As I indicated when this tape started, that it, today is Tuesday, the 9th day of November 2010, and the time when I started was 2.44 in the morning. We're presently at 5 District in the town of Markham in the regional municipality of York. Um, is, there anything, uh, is there anything I need to know in order to understand your statement? And that means, is, is there, do, you have, do you suffer from any physical or mental condition, use of alcohol, drugs, or anything of any concerns that would influence your ability to give me a statement? No. Um, we are investigating a murder, okay? And you're aware of who it is. It's um, the murder of your mom. And uh, can you can you tell me what your mom's name is? My mother's name is Big Ha Pan. Big Ha Pan. As a part of our investigation into the offense, I would like to interview on videotape and under oath or solemn affirmation or solemn doc, uh, declaration. It is my obligation to advise you of certain information before we commence this statement. You may be a witness in the court concerning the events you are about to describe in your statement. If at any time you change your statement or claim not to remember the events, the content of this video statement you now give may be used as evidence in court. Do you understand? Yes, I do. I'm going to get you some Kleenex in a second, okay? You, you have nothing to apologize to me for, Jennifer. I... I... Uh, I, I, it's going to be tough, but you know the importance of this statement, okay? But don't, you have nothing to apologize to me about. I'm here to help you, okay? Um, it is also my obligation to advise you that fabricating evidence, this stuff is the penalties for lying, as I explained to you earlier. Fabricating evidence with the intent to mislead is an offense under Section 137 of the Criminal Code. If you give a false statement under oath, you may be charged with fabricating evidence. If convicted of fabricating evidence, you may be sentenced up to 14 years in jail. 
It is also an offense under Section 139 of the Criminal Code to obstruct by willfully attempting to obstruct, pervert, or defeat the course of justice. You may be charged if you obstruct justice. Uh, obstruct justice. If convicted of obstructing justice, you could be sentenced up to 10 years in jail. It is also an offense under Section 140 of the Criminal Code to commit public mischief by causing a police officer to start or continue an investigation by making a false statement that accuses some other person of committing an offense. And you may be charged if you commit public mischief. If convicted of public mischief, you could be sentenced up to five years. If you are charged with one or more of these offenses, this statement may be used in court against you. Do you understand the criminal sanctions of what I have explained to you? Do you understand the criminal consequences of making a false statement? Yes. Do you understand that it is your choice whether or not to give a statement? Yes. Do you understand the importance of telling the truth? Yes, I do. With respect to this investigation? If you have spoken to any per police officer or person in authority in connection with the investigation, I want it clearly understood but I do not want it to influence you in making, uh, uh, making a statement. Do you understand? Yes. Do you have any questions? So basically, um, just start anew right now. So what, what I've just explained to you is you're here voluntarily to help us, that you don't have to talk to us if you don't want to, but the importance of talking to us, and if you're talking to us, the importance of telling the truth. And if you don't tell the truth, there's criminal consequences for not telling the truth. That's all that all that stuff had to deal with. Okay? You can't point the finger at someone else. You can't tell us to go off in a different direction. You just got to tell us the truth. Well, I know. Exactly. Exactly. And do you have any questions with respect to what I've just told you? It's just like sitting sometimes like parts come back that I didn't remember when I spoke No one is, it. and that's the process. This is going to be a long process. This is an initial statement from you. We may, you know, as you remember other things, you may be asked, you may want to come in and tell us things, okay? No one is going to tell you how to give us a, per give a perfect statement. You just do what the best you can, given, the, given what you're dealing with, okay? Any other questions? Are you prepared to give a statement under oath or solemn affirmation or declaration? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to get I'm going to get there's a commissioner of oaths who's going to come in and deal with this right now with you. Just it's just a filling out of this last portion right here, and I'm going to get you some Kleenex too while while she's talking to you. Okay? I'm the Commissioner of Oaths with the York Regional Police. I'm here so you can give a truthful statement either by solemn affirmation or swearing on the Bible. Which do you prefer? Swearing on the Bible. Just put your hand on the Bible. Do you, Jennifer Pan, swear that the evidence you shall give on this investigation shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? I do. Just sign right there for me, okay? So we're through the forms. Um, that just that's the, the administrative process about this. Now I want you to sort of take yourself back to earlier on today, uh, yesterday, meaning the the eighth of November, and uh, tell me about your day. Okay, start at any point in time, where wherever you feel comfortable, and then, then we're going to move we're going to move forward. Okay. Um, yesterday, probably around 9 o'clock in the morning, 9.30, um, my mother, <coughs> she woke me up and she told me that she was going to go to visit my grandfather, who was ill, 
and that she was going to go over and pick up my aunt to go. Um, once we stepped out of the house, there were um, a few police officers blocking, barricading the driveway, and so she called me down, and when I came down, the officers just said that there was like a gas leak in the area, and uh, they were just as precaution evacuating, and before we could walk over to a safer place, they said that um, the evacuation had been moved to somewhere else, that it was safe to go back home. <coughs> With that, my mom decided for me to stay home, uh, and because I have some piano history stuff that I'm working on, so I was <coughs> doing that on the computer, played a little piano. I forget what time my mom come, came home, probably around like 3, 3.30. Um, my father came home later than usual. He said that he had forgot to lock a toolbox and had to turn back, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, he just was home later than usual. Okay. Um, once he came home, he um, phoned up my uncle and asked him to go to buy a USB pen, I think, just to go shopping with him because my, my uncle doesn't drive. Uh, they left, so my mom had prepared dinner because she was heading to go dancing that night, the line dancing. She does it every Monday, and so her and I sat down for dinner first, and then um, well after my father came home, he did that, and then a friend of mine came over. We do TV night every every so often. So um, my dad, I guess, went up on the computer, as he always does, and I was downstairs with my friend watching movies, and my mom was out uh, dancing. Um, my friend left around 9, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then my, I upstairs in my room, called it a night with the TV on, um, talking on the phone with a friend of mine. And then uh, shortly after, my mom came home, I believe that was around 9.30 or so. She was rummaging downstairs. I didn't think anything of it. And then suddenly I just heard my mom calling for my dad to come down. And that's when I lowered the volume on my TV, and I could hear the voices weren't any voices I was very familiar with. And so I was scared, and I couldn't move. I just sat in my room for a while. And then I thought I heard them all let, like leave the top floor, and I peered out of my bedroom door. And a guy was there, and he came at me, and had string in his hands and tied my arms back and said, I have a gun behind your back. Do what I say. If you do what I say, then no one will get hurt. Where is the money? Show me where your money is. I, um, I have still a few, a bit of money put aside from when I was waitressing cash. So I showed him where it was, and he took it and put it in his pocket, I think. And then that's where they, they pushed me to my parents' room and asked me where the money was there, and I didn't really know. So they kind of like, one was right beside me, blocking my way to the door, while the other ones turned over the bed to find some more cash in my mom's bedside table. which then they dragged me down the stairs and made me kneel at the bottom, telling me to face down on the floor while the other guy had a gun behind my head and asked my mom where her purse was. My mom kept trying to get up and they kept telling her to sit down and so I didn't want her to get hurt so I told her mom to sit down. They were trying to find her wallet but she, her English thinker so she kept saying first they kept pushing her down onto the chair. Okay. Take your time. Take your time. All this is very important, so take your time. They kept all the lights off on the main floor. The only time there was light was when they opened the fridge door to see if they could find where my mom's purse was. I didn't at that point, I saw three figures of men. One with a hoodie, 
but the one I could see the most clearly, he had a hoodie on, and I believe he had a bandana of some sort covering from, like, his lower, uh, under his eyes, down. And then, for some reason, I think w one of the, the gentlemen asked my father if he had money in his wallet, and where his wallet was. So they took me, because I was next to the stairwell, they took me up the stairs to sh show them where my father's wallet was, but I'm, I didn't know. They had turned the room upside down. I didn't know where his pants were at that time. And then, after they had gotten that, they had taken me and they tied me to the top of the banister. Just with one string, I could still move, but I was afraid to because the one guy just had that gun. Just Next thing I know, oh, I think I hear my parents going down the stairs and my mom was asking them for me to come with them. They wouldn't let me come with them. After they said, the last thing I heard them say was, You lied. You lied to us. You lied to us. And then I heard two pops. My mom screamed. I yelled out for her. <laughs> and a couple more pops. Take your time. Take your time. And I think I heard my mom say or moan or something, and then they did one more before they left, and then one of the guys said, we have to go now. It's been too long. And then they ran out the door. And I think once they were out the door, I heard my dad go up the stairs, and at that point, I had my phone in my po in my on me behind me that I had hidden there that they didn't know about. So when I when I when they when I thought that they had heard them all leave, and my dad ran up the stairs, I whipped up the phone and I called 911. But I, I still hadn't heard anything from my mom, and all I could hear was my dad running on the street, just moaning and making sounds. And that's pretty much uh, what I. So what can. happens? Continue on from from now to the point that the police arrive. I was just on the phone with the secretary or the operator. I begged her not to leave me alone. And that my dad was outside. I, I was yelling to him, but he wouldn't come in. I don't know if he didn't hear me. He didn't come in. I think he went to the look rail. And I didn't get to see my dad at all until before I left the hospital just now. How did you get free? The cop came and he snipped the two the two strings off for me. I was I was asking them for so long and <clears throat> they said they couldn't untie me until they knew how to properly untie the string. Okay. So we've gone through we've gone through a, a very tough portion and now we're sort of going to go back clinically, you know, try and rem I want you to put yourself now as a as a figure looking down at what you see. Okay, um, so you go back, you're up in your room at 9.30, correct? At 9, 9.30. Right? You're, you're on the phone. Who are you on the phone with? With a friend of mine, an old co-worker. An old co-worker. Are you on the phone with that person when you hear these voices that you don't recognize? Yes. And um, do you remain on the phone with this person, or when does that conversation end? It ended when I heard my mother asking my father to come down the stairs and normally they um, they they don't get a, they don't communicate very well sometimes so what I did was I told my friend I'll call you back and I hung up stuck the phone in the back pocket and started to go up the door and that's when I noticed that there were men running around okay so let's back up again when you hear your mom come do you hear your mom 
In the house? She was in the house. I had gone down the stairs. Did you hear, so before this, this is when, when did you hear your mom for the first time in the house? When she came home. And what time was that? 9.15. Is there a time period, so, and where is your father at that time? He had, he's just finishing on the computer, I think, and he was heading to bed. So did you physically see your mom? Yes. And at that time there was no one strange in the house? No, I went, she was on the downstairs sofa. She was watching TV when I last saw her. Okay. Where is the, so between that time that you see her and you leave her on the sofa, until you hear the noises, the strange, the, the, the voices as you describe them. How long is that? Maybe a half hour. A half an hour? Um, where is it you, your mom was before here? She goes dancing every Monday at St. I'd like to say St. Paul, but I'm not 100% sure. And where is St. Paul's? Because uh, I don't know if she's moved locations from the last time she does lessons. Yeah. Um, the last one I remember, she said that there was one on Birchmount and Finch. Yeah, Birchmount and Finch on the southwest corner. A Birchmount and Finch? Yeah. I know the area. Okay. She used to dance there at but I'm not 100% sure whether she moved to a different, with somebody else. She what? does dance, she does goes dancing with a few relatives as well. Okay. Was she, would she have been there with a few relatives tonight? Is that the normal thing? On the one night I forgot to ask. Normally, um, the normal is that she goes with one or two friends, one from across the street and one relative just on the other side of uh, the 407. What are their names? Um, I call, I only know their names by what I call them. Okay. Um, I call one Buck Mui, and then um, the other one is my cousin, and her name is Vong. And the one who lives on your street, what number, the neighbor who lives on that she usually goes with? Uh, Across the street, about two houses down. I don't know the exact number, unfortunately. Okay, we'll find that out. Um, and that, so she's been going there for how many, how long? She's been dancing for a long while. A long time? A long, maybe more than a year. Okay. Um, what does your mom do? F what, what does she do for a living? She used to work for Magna. Okay. But what does the job cut back? Um, due to the job cutback, she was unemployed but could not find employment. Okay. And uh, so she's been at home looking for a job, and recently I think her pension's done. How long is how long has she been out of work with Manga? I'd say at least a year and a half. Okay. And um, what about your father? What does he do for a living? He also works for the car company, uh, Cole. They just changed their names. Um, something Colben, Cobell, and Unstell. What does he do? I, he does. He wears many hats, from like assembly line worker. But I think his title is tool and die operator. Okay. So, nine fifteen, you see your mom down on the downstairs couch, and you see your dad. He's at the uh, computer. And where is the computer located? Upstairs, right, bes right beside his room. Right He's in a separate room beside his room. Okay. And you are going to bed. You're going up to your room to, to watch TV and, and mm -hmm. tune, turn down for the night. Yep. Um, and then approximately, again, how long later that you hear these voices? My mom had to be home for maybe 20 minutes. don't really have that window. I think around like maybe 9.40. 9.40? Okay. Estimates, it's fine. Yeah, I'm not expecting to hold you down to times because we can probably get that from who you were speaking to, right? Because how long after you end the conversation with the person does this, do you hear the voices? 
They're already in the house. So you end the conversation because you hear the voices. You'll call the person back. I, yeah, because I heard my dad and then I heard some strange voices is when I was like, I'll call you back. And who was it that you were speaking to? A co-worker of mine. And what's what's that name? What's Ed. Ed? Edward. Edward, you know Edward's last name? Pacific Edward. Okay. So what is it that you hear that causes your father to go downstairs? My mother calling for him. And what is he? Is she speaking in English or is she speaking in another language? She was speaking in English, which is, which is why it also caught my attention. What language does she normally speak? Uh, at home, we speak a mix of like Vietnamese is most fluent, but we do throw some Chinese words here and there. Okay. Or but, English words here and but there. But the vast majority of it is Vietnamese. Vietnamese. What is the first when you hear these, this? Can you hear them talking downstairs? The unknown voices. It's all a mumble. It's a mumble. Because I had the TV on, it was just all a mumble. When's the first time that you actually can hear one of them talking? When he was upstairs, and I thought he had left the upstairs, because I was frozen in my room for a while, yep. trying to listen in, but I couldn't hear over my TV, and I didn't want to startle, startle them by turning it off or like diminishing the volume. So I was kind of pressed up against my door for a while, trying to hear it. And I thought that all the people upstairs had gone down, so I opened up my door quietly and tried to peer out, and he saw me, and that's when he came. Can you, did you have lights on in your room at that time? My lights were off, I only had the reflection off my TV, which is lower to the door. What do you see of this guy? And the I'm calling him a guy because you said you, you thought they were I all males. I think they were all three males. Okay, so tell me about this guy. Uh, he was medium build. Okay. I didn't, I don't remember any of his clothing, unfortunately. The only thing I can remember was him was he had dreadlocks. He had dreadlocks. So are you, uh, it, can you describe his race to me? He was black. Did it, was his head covered? Was his face covered? Do you remember anything about that? Just that his dreadlocks were like, kind of like flopping all over the place. I couldn't really d see his face and they kept the lights dark as much as as much as possible. How long? How long were the dreadlocks? Was it? Were they? You know, like when you say they're dreadlocks and they were flopping all over his face. It's hard. To, I, I, don't want to remember a hundred percent. I think some of them were like around his face were a little shorter, mm -hmm. and then in the back there were there were longer ones. Okay. Now his complexion. Um, there's various degrees of of of. Of dark. dark to medium dark to to actually light. Uh, I'd say he was. He I wouldn't say he was the darkest person I've seen, but he was on the darker side. Any facial hair? I'd like to say maybe. Say only what you can think. Sure. Just. Just say what you th what you think. I don't want you to say what you're. But you I don't know. want to say something wrong. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you, if you don't know, then it's okay know. to say. It's okay I'm to not say. Sure. That. Okay. So, can you give an age approximation for this guy? Well, when the other officer asked me, I was leaning along the ages of twenty-eight to thirty-three. So, an, 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 an someone who's established in life. I would assume so. Like not established meaning world, meaning that he's been around, the, been around. So uh, a 20-year-old talks completely different than a 30-year-old, as you know. He seemed to be the one in charge. He seemed to be running the show? He's the one that had me. Like, he pretty much did not let me go. He was in charge of me. And all the money I showed him, he pocketed. Okay. Did he have a gun? Yes. Did you see the gun? I only saw the top part of the gun. What did it look like? Um, kind of, it was black. Yeah. And it kind of, not triangular, but it was slightly wider at the end than it was closer. Do you know the difference between what a pistol and a revolver is? Yes. Okay. Do you know if it was a pistol or a revol revolver? That particular one that he was holding, I believe, should have been a pistol. A pistol. 
Okay. Because the difference is the, the round part, right? So you tell me what's a pistol and what's a revolver. Which one has okay. the round part? I would think that the revolver has the, the ones that the bullets go around. Okay. And it didn't look like that. It looked like more like a handgun. So it looked more like a pistol? Yes. What you're saying, not a revolver? No. The okay. other gentleman, though. We'll go, we'll go to the other gentleman. We'll go this in stages so that we're not dealing with We'll call this guy number one. Okay. Because you're saying that he seemed to be running the show. As you running, he was in control. From my perspective, yes. He was in control of you. Yes. Is this the gentleman? Is this the guy who tied you up? Yes. Okay. I want you to. My, he, he was the one that tied my wrist together. He wasn't the one that tied me to the banister. Okay. So where did he get the shoelaces, or whatever the laces were, or whatever it was that tied you up? I'm not sure. It might have been from my mother's room or the study room or. Because my mom has a sewing table next to her bed. So when you open the door, where is this guy? He was just stepping out of my brother's, well, what formula would be my brother's room. So he's already on the upstairs. Yeah. Do you know where the other guys involved in this are? I know one stayed with my parents downstairs. Okay. Um, the other one, I'm not, at that point in time, I was more focused on him, like he was seeing me and he was coming after me. So you're like saying him. there's three for sure? Yes. That's all, you saw a total of three at one time, you saw three people yes. together? Yes, when I went downstairs, okay. I saw three shadows. Okay, so um, this number one guy, and we're calling him number one because he was he was the one who tied you up and he's the first one that you actually are confronted by. Um, and he comes out of your brother's room, mm -hmm. what was formerly your brother's room, and he comes into you, he comes into your room, mm -hmm. and what happens in there? He tells me to sit down, and, and, he's, he, and, is he, he, and he shows me his gun. So it's not pointing at you, but you see not it, yet. and where is it? It's like in a holster almost. Okay. And then he showed it to me, and he's like, don't move. And then someone else brought him the shoelace. Okay, can you describe the other person who brings the shoelace? I would... He was the second person and the only other person that I encountered with. Okay. Um, I only saw the third guy, but he didn't encounter with me at all. Okay. But uh, he had a hood. He had a hoodie, and uh, like a bandana over his face. Yeah. He's his complexion. Then it was really dark, but I could tell that he was darker than the first guy. So he's a male black as well. But thinner build. But thinner build. So we got a medium build, thin build, and what about the height? Where you know, like, where are we in height scales? How tall are you? Five seven. So where are they in comparison to you? I'd say one was pretty much right around my height level. And which guy is that? The um, the medium build. The first guy, first guy you encounter, who yeah. shows you the gun, yeah. and tie eventually ties your wrist together. He's he's about your height, so he's somewhere in the area of five, six, six to five to eight, seven. five six to seven. Seven, I'd say. Okay. And the other guy, I'd say around five eight, maybe smidge higher, lower than eight. So he's taller than you, but not much. Not much. Okay. Now the first guy, he spoke to you. What kind of, did he have any accent? None Is it that clear? I could make out. Was Just it clear English? English. Unbroken? Unbroken. No accent? From the terms he used, I didn't get to pick up an accent, no. He used so short phrases. He sounded, he sounded Canadian? I would say, yes, he was born here. He was born here. Okay. So number two guy you see with the bandana, and he's got a darker complexion, and he's, yeah. he's thinner. Yes. And he's about 5'8". With a hoodie. With a hoodie. Is it black hoodie or what color is it? It, Again, it was all really dark, yeah. so I'm assuming he was wearing black. What about the bandana? Can you see a color on the bandana? It was very dark as well. Okay. Anything distinguishing about his eyes? I didn't look straight into his eyes, no. no. Any other portions of clothing that you recognized? No, unfortunately. Okay, how about this guy's... Um, language. What did? How was he? Did he speak he to you? He didn't speak at all. Nothing. He just nodded. He nodded. Who seemed to be giving the directions? Number one. He, the guy, first guy you encountered, seemed to be telling everyone what to do. 
from what you, t you can tell. Okay, so now they're both upstairs with you. Where are your parents? They're in the living room. They're in the living room. And now what happens? They take me downstairs. Are they, have they tied you now? They, yeah, the number one has tied me, okay. and now they're taking me down the stairs. Describe first how he's tied you. He told, he grabbed my arm, and he pulled it to the back, and said, give me your other arm as well. Okay. And then I was trying to make a wide X so that I could later loosen if I needed it to, but he had pulled really, really tight. And okay. I guess he felt my flinch, and that's when he quickly tied the second knot. I think I don't exactly know. All I know is like I flinched, and then it got tighter. So you were tied. You were bound behind you. Behind me, yes. Okay. Um, and then you're taken downstairs. Tell me what happens down there. Um, they sit me right at the bottom of the stairs, like um, slightly out, not exactly directly at the bottom of the stairwell, but just slightly over a little. And um, the third guy who I didn't encounter, but he was there, he was like, where's your money? Cooperate with us. And, you, and then my mom's like, you know, yelling and don't hurt us. And, you know, my money's in my wallet. Just please leave my paperwork. This person, this third guy who you're now describing, do you see him ever? Only as a shadow? Because he was, there's a, a wall, a okay. partial wall. And he was like right in that vision over my father, but partially in that vision. It, it, describe his voice to you, to me. It had a slight, just a very, very slight accent. Do you recognize the accent? I can't definitively say which accent it was. So it was more like a Guyanese or Jamaican accent. Okay. So it's an island accent. It's not what you'd call. It's not an Asian accent. No. It's not like a, a, a Western European German or, or anything like this. This is something you recognize as being the South Caribbean, Asian or Caribbean. Caribbean, yeah. Caribbean. Okay. Um, when the guy upstairs, number one guy, who, who you're, we described as our number one guy with the dreadlocks, or with the yeah the dreadlocks, right? When he shows you the gun. Do you see anything on his hands? Gloves. He's wearing gloves? What Number about, one was wearing gloves. What about anyone else? The other guy, the second guy? I don't remember. I'm, he must have been, but I can't 100% say. All I saw was that number one had gloves in his hands. Do you recognize or can you describe the type of gloves he had in his hands? Leather gloves. Leather gloves? Okay, or so they're, like, not, they're not like surgical gloves? They're not surgical gloves. They weren't like or skating gloves or like wool gloves. I'm pretty sure they were leather gloves. Leather gloves. Okay. So now you're downstairs. You're sitting in the stairs? They, they told me to sit at the bottom of the stairs. Are like you on, on the, the floor, floor or on the, on, the floor. on the floor? Your parents are in the living room? Yes. How many people are with you and how many people are with your parents? One with me, the guy in the corner with my parents, and the third guy kind of Going between? Going between, where's the purse, sit down, where's the purse, sit down. He's the guy who you describe as the thinner build, medium, and he was upstairs with you. Okay. Um, where do you go? What happens from this point? Now, you're down on the stairs, and there's a guy going between. There's two, obviously, your parents in the living room. You're on the They're floor. They're looking for my mother's wallet, but she can't remember. She's... Take a deep breath. Best way to do this, the best way for you to, to on this, on these parts in here, is to pull yourself out and be like you're a, a you're an observer in this. Okay, it's not going to help you through or heal you through, but it's going to help you try and remember components, and it neutralizes what your mom said. You just are now hearing, you're echoing what your mom is saying to these people. Okay. After a bit, she had realized that she didn't carry a purse. She had just gone home from dancing, so her wallet would be in the bag, and that's where the money would be. And while that guy's searching for her and telling her to sit back down, the, the one behind the wall was asking my father if he had money in his wallet. 
and my dad said yes. And they asked how much, I, I think I heard my dad say $60. And they, then the one that was with me was signaled, and he said, come here, go show us where it is. He had a lower, lower tone. Who's that? Who, number one. Number one, a lower voice? Yeah. Okay, and this is, um, and you say the reason 28 to 30-ish, 30 33 is, is, um, is why? Why do you hear that as being the age of this person that you're dealing with, that he's... It's just the way he, like, his muscular tone, I don't know how exactly to say this, but he wasn't, he wasn't, like, built, like, muscular, like a young man. What about the but second guy you hear when you, what do you, how would, how would, how old do you think he would be in? I didn't hear his voice. I didn't get to see much of his face. Okay. So you don't know? But if I had to guess, I'd say younger than that number one, though. Okay. So they take you, you're you're now there, and they're wanting to go to this wallet. Yes. So they're now telling me, like, dragging me by my, my sweater, get up, get up, show us where it is. Okay. And one kept me at the door while one was inside looking. When you looked inside that bedroom, had it been, you said it was tossed, had it already been tossed? So, they were in, so the room had been tossed prior to you opening the door to see? See, yes. Okay. Because um, that's when I figured out what was happening and I kind of froze. So I heard them moving stuff around. And how long I, do you think that they were in, that you heard between the time, I guess it's tough in the, in the freeze time, but how long do you, do you hear it and then moving around before you're confronted by one of them? Less than five. Less than five minutes? Okay. I then it just all time, time is, t time's all over the place. I understand that. It's your estimation. It's about five minutes, maybe. Um, okay, so you're now upstairs and he's in who's inside the room looking for this wallet in in your dad's what you I'm guessing number two because by the time I was found number two wasn't on the first floor he had gone back down oh no no, no. I mean when you're back up oh, sorry back. when you're now back upstairs and they're looking for your dad's wallet mm -hmm. who's with you and who's turning the room number one has me okay and number two is the one looking and flipping and where is it here is it over there and number one keeps saying, time, we're running out of time, faster, it's taking too long. Okay. How long is he in that room for? Maybe just a few minutes, a few moments. Okay. Not that long. Do they find what they're looking for? I don't remember. Okay. What happens next? He decides to tie me down to the banister. Okay. That he didn't want to take me downstairs anymore. So you're now tied to the banister? Yep, he calls for Cuzzy. So he's like, get Cuzzy to give me that string I just gave him. And who is he talking to? Number two. So he says to number two, tell Cuzzy to get me that string. Do you hear any other names during this whole time? Cuzzy. Just Cuzzy. Just Cuzzy. Okay, so now what happens? They tied my arm to the banister. Did number two go downstairs? Yes. He followed the directions? Yes. And he comes back upstairs with the string? Yes. And you get tied to the banister? Yes. Okay. Continue. And the next thing I can hear are them telling my parents to move to the basement. Okay. And I'm asking them, why? Where are you going? And my mom's yelling to me, I want my daughter. Why can't my daughter come too? I want my daughter. Who goes down to the basement? Do you can you see that from where you're sitting? My back is towards the wall. Do you hear anyone else in the main level? Where where your parents were? Like you can hear if people are trucking down the stairs, you hear your parents going down the stairs. Do you hear like five sets of footsteps foot, footsteps going down there or can't you hear that? I was just such a distress. I I don't exactly know how many people went down. Okay. Did you ever see a gun on anyone else? On... Um, because number two and number three, 
as we'll call them. Number three is the unknown guy unknown who you guy. just hear, who we, who we hear is Cuzzy, mm -hmm. and you hear him with a slight island uh, yes. Caribbean accent. Okay. Yes. Um, one of those two, like they they dress very similar, like very thin build. You saw number three. You can describe. Well, like just briefly, like through the the reflection from the lamp post okay. on the street. Yeah. Through my uh, through the the sheer curtains. Curtains, yeah. He, I just saw briefly. He was quite thin build. Another thin build guy. Yeah. Similar to number two. Yes. And and what about the gun? Did you see another gun? I saw the tip of his gun because he had pointed it out at my father, and okay. that one was was a revolver like it had the the rotating you saw the cylinder yeah the rotating cylinder portion of the gun yeah you saw that yeah okay and what color was the gun i was quite a bit away okay and how did you see the sil how did you see this did you see it as a silhouette or did you actually physically see the gun i was on the floor kneeling when he was asking my father for his wallet yes he had pointed it out and I w like I was told to keep my head down, but I kind of looked up, looked up like peripheral here, and then I saw that. So what portion of the gun are you seeing? If you're seeing, are you seeing him holding the with the handle and the revolver? Because the cylinder portion sticks right. Yeah, like right close by here. Can you see him wearing gloves, or can you see him? W Honestly, the lights were all out on that side of the house. Okay. But in your estimation, it's a revolver because of what you. I I saw like I saw like what it looked like. The... Okay, you see nothing else about his clothing or anything else. Unfortunately, I wish I could have. But... No, that's all. We just have to make sure that uh, that we understand. So you're now you when um, when you're tied to the banister, right? And your parents are now going down to the basement. Do you hear or see anyone else upstairs while that's happening? Or no down one came in back upstairs for me. No one came back upstairs for you. Okay. Can you, can you hear the voices down? Other than your parents, can you hear their voices down there? I, all I could hear was, this is taking too long. Who's it's saying alive. that? Whose voice is that? You hear all three voices. You can distinguish them. Who's do you hear saying this is taking too long? I'm because it was said to you upstairs. Right? Who said that to you upstairs? Who was saying that upstairs? This Number is taking one. It? Number one. Is that the same voice that you hear saying it downstairs? Yes. The on only two of them voiced. Number three and number one voiced up. Voices voiced up. Yeah. Who do you hear yelling you lie to us or to number that extent? Number three. Number three. To my, I'm assuming it's to my father because he was the one asking for the wallet. Now, your mum's your mum with her wallet. Would your mum? Do you know if your mum had gone to the bank after after her dance class or after she had finished? Well, she just uh, went to the bank a few days ago. Okay. Is there what type of car does your mum drive? And first off, did your mum drive tonight? What type of car does your mum drive? A Lexus. A Lexus. Yes, three hundred. And she drove tonight. Okay. So now you hear this commotion downstairs. You said you heard two pops. And you heard who scream? Your mom. And what was she screaming? Do you I remember? I make it out. It no? was kind of like a cry, cry yell, so it was just... Okay. It, are, are they still talking? Do you hear them talking? I was focused on my mom. And no, I understand. I'm only going to ask questions that I can try and tweak your memory for, okay? So you hear the two pop noise. You hear your mom screaming or ye crying or screaming or yelling. And then you hear some more. I hear you. Do you I know how many more you heard? <sighs> there was a set. I don't, I don't want to say this wrong. Say it what you think and what you what you believe. So you're not I, whatever you say isn't going to be wrong. Something for sure is I don't know if it was one, and then what I'm going to tell you, and then one, yeah. or if it was two, and then 
what they said I'm going to tell you, and then another one. Basically, they had made the first round, or pop, pop, and they had, they had said, okay, that's enough. Let's go. Who said that? Whose voice is that? Number one. Okay. And then I heard one more after that, and they were like, that's enough. Let's go. Okay. And again, that's number one. Yes. Do you hear Three's voice at all? Not at that point. After he had pretty much said, you... After he said that you lied to us, you lied to us, you just had to cooperate. And then they shot him, and that's the last time I heard of Three. Okay. So... How many shots, not putting it in sequence, how many shots do you think you hear in total? Five. Five? Then what happens? And then... Talk about just, them I mean, first. You're scrambling. Okay. You're scrambling. Can you see the front door from where you are? No? Okay. Did you ever hear how they got into the house? Doorbell ring... No. Kick door, nothing like that? I don't remember how they got in. I don't even know how they got in. Okay. Um, you, uh, you hear scrambling noises. Do Are you, you hear, talking about right now? Right at this point in time. So we're back to the time they're leaving, okay? Or they're, you hear the scrambling noise, and I'm only assuming they leave because they're not there when we get there. Um, do you know which way they go out? You can't I'm, hear that. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the front door, yeah. but I'm not 100%. I didn't get to see anything. Like, my arms were behind my back, and I was against the banister, yep. and the banister is twisted, so I can't see the front door. Now you hear your dad, yeah. right? And what's going on? So what do you hear next? After you hear the scrambling, they're gone. Because you're hearing no more. I gather that's how you assume they're gone is because you don't hear it. Then you hear your dad. I, I reach for my phone at okay. that point. Okay. And you call 911. Okay. And then you, what happens after you're on? Uh, I just, I, I heard my dad go out. And I don't know if they damaged his throat. Or how did you hear your dad? So what? I, this is the kind of importance because if you, he did he go out the front door? How did you, door. how did you know he went out the front door? Because I heard him open the door. Did you hear that door open when these guys were scrambling to leave? There was just so much thudding. I'm Is your house got an alarm system? Yes. Do you know the alarm system when the front door goes off and there's that chirping? We, don't, we don't have that chirping. No? No. Is your house alarmed at night when you guys go to bed? Before the last person goes up to bed, they will alarm it. But prior to that, it doesn't get alarmed? Okay. So... You hear your, you, from your, when your father exits, you hear the door open, because you hear your daughter, and then you And then I can hear, like, the outside noises. Okay. Like the wind coming in, and I just hear my dad, ah, I think he's... You think that he's sustained some kind of injury, because he's not, you can't understand what he's saying. Okay. What about, do you, do you can you hear your mom? Okay. Where does your dad go? Do you know where? You never see your dad again until when we're at the hospital. I think that's what you said, right? I saw him when he was on the gurney, but the officers walked me around, so he really didn't. Okay, so now you're upstairs and you're on the phone with the 911 operator. Okay. Do you remain on the phone until the police arrived? And the officer is the one who cuts, gets you free? He, he first had to secure the place. Yes. It took me a while to get somebody upstairs. Okay. And... I just kept screaming. Okay. And, um, I guess they went into my bedroom and I have a pair of scissors that I cut my hair with. Yes. And they said that they cut it for me, but it was still a while longer until after they cut the string so that I could be free. Do you understand that they, uh, no. of the importance to clear the, the, what they were doing? It wasn't to leave you in any kind of trauma or anything no. like that? I understand. It's just... Did, 
from it's a very tough question considering all the things that you've gone through tonight Jennifer is any of the tying up any of the binding any of the things were you sexually assaulted in any way it wasn't that this was strictly they were after money it, from what I saw they were after money they wanted it now how much money did you turn over to them from my personal I had about two twenty five hundred twenty five hundred and where was that enough. and where was that in my nightstand underneath the TV okay and that was from work that you had done yeah what do you do for a living now what are you doing right now I heard you were saying about piano are you in school I I recently lost all my students in piano I had a few yes. for a while but uh, they've gone on to universities that's why as of September I didn't have any more students so you were a piano instructor yes out of my home okay just for family friends here and there um, also my family needed me home for a while and I was doing some uh, piano classes with a very good teacher of mine okay and I'm going back to school in January to to study biotechnology engineering okay um, your parents are they known to keep large quantities of cash in their house do they have a large quantity of cash in their in their bank I wouldn't say that it was large enough to raise flags it's enough to pay bills okay my mom's very diligent on making sure just just enough just enough so she wouldn't carry around a lot of cash is what you're saying the only we we did just come back from vacation so we did have not a large sum but a sum that we could we didn't spend over the sea over in the states and when when did you go away on vacation it was the weekend my cousin got married on 10 10 10 okay and where did and you go we went over to uh, Buffalo that's where you the wedding was in Buffalo well, just within Buffalo. Yeah. Within the area of Buffalo. And when you say that, that you came back with a quantity of cash, how much money are we talking about? At least 1100 in U.S. funds that my mom was going to go to the bank and put it in immediately, but um, family circumstances that we've been dealing with when we got back. So what are those family circumstances that you were dealing with when you came back? Well, my mom's sister was in town for the wedding. And then uh, my mom, the weekend after that wedding, we took her to Montreal for like one last visit before she went home to the UK to her son. Okay. And then, honestly, I think probably like a day or two after that, um, my grandfather fell really ill and he went to the hospital. And my mom and I were the two main people because my uncle doesn't drive. So we were the ones driving in and out all the time so is this your mom's father okay um, so that eleven hundred dollars did it get taken tonight I believe so and where would that where would that have been in my mom's bedside table and you said you saw them did they go into that bedside table um, and then was that the second time that you when they were upstairs and they were looking for your father's wallet while they're looking for my father's wallet they flipped the Put the bed off, and they're like, "Oh, you didn't. You missed that drawer." Like number one told number two, "You missed the drawer." So he, number one, was the one that leaned over and pulled it open. Okay, you guys are inside the bedroom. I was just at the doorway of the bedroom. Okay, so the, and where in relation to this bedroom, and where is this? this very tight, very tight space. Okay, so he he could stay with you and still reach around and grab this and open this drawer, and that's where they. Well, found he kind of pulled me with one hand closer. Yeah. As he leaned over, but it was close enough that you could maneuver. Okay, and um, so they grabbed that that American money. Yes. You see it go. I saw him fold it and put it in his pocket. Okay, and did that seem to agitate them? Did you see any change in behavior after after that? They're like, there has to be more. Who's saying that? Number one. They're saying there has to be more. Do they look any anywhere else? Are they looking anywhere else? 
Not besides my mother's wallet still and my dad's wallet. I don't even know if they got it. But uh, those two things that they wanted to see. Whatever happened down in the basement, I think I tried to hear as much as I could, but it was too many people and we have really creaky floors. So it's when you're when they're in that room, in, inside the bedroom, and now um, is it lit any better? Uh, so it's still all in darkness? So you still can't see if number two has got gloves on or not? No, they they had like something blind me. Like they number one, once when we first got in the room the light was on. And he's like, Hold on and he grabbed I don't remember what he grabbed, jacket or sleeve or something and he kinda like shell shielded me with it. And that's when he took my glasses and he like tossed them. So he took your glasses off? Okay. How did you get your glasses back? I asked the officer. Okay. And how bad are your eyes with your glasses off? Degree-wise, I'm about four, high four, I think 475 and 525. Okay, so you have, uh, with your glasses off, it's difficult for you to see things, right? I can see shapes, but no definition. But prior to all of this, you had your glasses on? So when you describe the gun and you describe the dreadlocks and you describe number two, what about when you saw the revolver? Did you have your glasses on at that point in time? Mm -hmm. So all of these observations are made with your glasses. It's not until you're tied upstairs, you're, you know, they're, they're... Right before they tied me to the banister, like when we went up the stairs the second time. Okay, and who ties you to the banister? Uh, I'm not sure if number two helped number one, but it was behind me. I'm not sure who did the tying. But number two goes downstairs to get the string yes. to tie tie you and up. And brings it up. And brings it up from this cuz. Cuz. And you're sure it's cuz, like cousin, cuz. I'm it, assuming. It's a, no, I'm not saying that that's what it is, but it's on that line of cuz. Yes, go tell cuz. Okay. And again, that's number one who's saying this. Have, is there any reason to suspect or anything that's happened in the recent weeks leading up that would have you guys be a target of some type of incident like this? We live a straightforward, kind of almost routine life. Where is your brother right now? He's in, well, he's right now. He's mm -hmm. here. But does he live with you guys? He, in the summertime, he goes back in September, normally end of August, goes back to school. Okay. He moves out there. What school is he at? McMaster's. And um, what year is he in? Third year, I believe. Third year of what type of program? Engineering. Engineering. Um, so there's nothing, there's no, it's because it, it's important, you know, like, there are places where there's illegal ga gambling going on, where people think there's large quantities of money. What, in your opinion, would cause people to target your house to think that there was a large quantity of money? I'm not sure. Now, you say your mom drives a Lexus. It could be because of the aesthetics, yes. What about your dad? He drives a Mercedes, and he loves that baby. Is that right? So your mom drives a Lexus, your dad drives a Mercedes. Um, the area you live in, you know, what's the square footage of your house? Do you have any idea? 2100. 2100. Um, and the only thing that happened tonight, that happens every Monday night, is your mom goes to dance. Yep. And you think it's at St. Paul's? And that would have been in the Birch Mount of Finch area? Yes. Southwest corner? Yes. She goes there at what time? She leaves the house at 7, picks up her friend, on, like right off of Kennedy. Yes. And I believe she starts at 7.30 to about 9, and then she'll, she's usually, usually home around 9.30. Usually home around 9.30, and so nothing was any different tonight other than the fact that she may have been home a little bit earlier than that, is that right? I think you said 9.15. No, my father after work. That was the only difference. Your father being late uh, because coming, it, home coming home after work. And what time did he arrive home? Sorry, we still haven't updated all our clocks yeah. on the daylight savings, but I think around 4.30 or so. Normally he'll be home by 10 to 4. 
Okay, so 4.30, and does he leave? Does he go out for the rest of the night, or is he in? Well, he came home, yeah. and then... Oh, he, he went with his... My uncle. Yeah, yes. he went with my uncle. I don't know where they went. Um, all I know is that he came back with a heat vent. I don't know. He bought something for the heat. Okay. He said his... He doesn't like how the draft comes up. He likes it to be focused. Oh, on. so it's like a heat deflector. Yeah. Okay. For the, the for the, the for the floor, the, uh, floor heat. seating for the heating elements on the floor. Okay. Yeah. The, the registers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, and what time does he get back? I had finished eating. Uh, he probably got back around six six fifteen. Six or six fifteen. Does he go out again? No. Is he on the computer for the for? Uh, for what is, what After he dinner, do? he ate dinner first. What does he do on the computer? He reads uh, Vietnamese news okay. and Vietnamese uh, soaps, I guess. And your mother, do you believe, comes home at 9.30, like normal? Around that time, more or less, there's nothing unusual about her time of coming home. And it's 10 to 15 minutes later that you hear the noises? You hear the different voices? I'd say. Okay. Maybe a little later. It could be of closer to. It could have been forty-five. Like is there any way of finding out for sure where your mum, where you, where this place was that they did dancing tonight? Um, I believe my cousin might have gone with her. Okay. It might be very important for us to find out exactly where she was, where this was tonight. Okay. Okay. Um. You just sit tight for a minute, okay, and think think about anything else that you can that might help us in this. You, we've gone through a lot of the details, and um, um, I just want to talk. I just want to talk to the, the the officer who's monitoring it, and I also want to talk to the lead investigator just to see if there's anything else I need to ask you about. You've explained the scissors which were found upstairs in the area. They were used that you would cut your hair, but an officer came and brought them to you to cut you free. Okay, is that correct? Okay. Did you ever go down into the basement? No. Well, and where did you go I once? I went to the basement earlier in the night when I was with my friend watching movies. No, no, no. I mean... Uh, during uh, that? During the time. And who was over watching movies with you? What's her name? Oh, his name. Adrian. His, Adrian. And Adrian's last name? Tinkovitz. 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 And where does Adrian live? He lives on Birch Mount. No. Sir Brimley. Brimley and Finch. Brimley and Finch. Okay, and how long have you known Adrian for? Uh, more than 10, 15 years. So this like is a school. kind of a regular occurrence for you guys? Yep. We meet up once a week, if not once a month, depending on how busy our lives are. Yep. And we sit and we watch our usual shows. Okay. And so that, that was, uh, that's what happened tonight. Mm -hmm. And what time did Adrian leave at? Nine. At nine? Ten to nine, nine o'clock. Okay. And Edward is who you were on the phone with? Yes. Okay, until you got off the phone because of the noises. Did you tell Edward what was going on? No, I just, I basically just told him, I gotta go, I'll call you later. Okay. Do you know what show you were watching when this was going on? What you had on the TV? <laughs> Sorry, multitasking. I was watching Gossip Girl, and then I was watching uh, Kate Plus 8. Kate Plus 8. It's just the time, what we're doing is the time to stamp things, right? Not only the phone and, and whatever else. Now, as part of... Um, the investigation we have your cell phone right now mm -hmm. um, we're going to ask you if you would consent to uh, to your phone records to okay. help us on the investigation and that will again that's part of the time stamping of things you know of who you're on the phone with who you're talking to and when this happened I just don't like I talk to people on the phone but I don't really want them to know what's happening with my the unfortunate yeah. the unfortunate thing is that probably Edward and Adrian are people who were probably going to be interviewed because they were in the house and in the end, and they were on the phone with you. So as much, and I'm telling you that you know, the media is going to be um, around this case. And and um, that's, that, you know, like we have no control over what they say and what they do. My only advice to you is don't read the papers and turn the TVs off, right? Um, they may not, they may come and go and very quietly disappear because something else pops onto their radar. But, you know, home invasion type robbery where someone is murdered can become very big news and people wear this stuff, you know, they, they hang on it. So, for the next little, next five to seven days, I would say that 
tell your friends and you, your, well, your family, it's, it's of no value for you to be listening to the news or reading about this stuff. Okay? Because it's just going to upset you even more than what, you, than what you feel right now. So just bear with me for a minute, okay? I'm going to go and it may be a little bit longer than a minute. I'm just going to go and talk to the officer who's monitoring it to see if there's any clarifica cl clarification questions and, and also the guy who's investigating it, if there's something else when I brief him, if there's something else I should be asking you about, okay? And we're close to being, we're very close to being done. Have a seat. We got uh, just a couple more questions. We're going to give your phone back to you, okay? And then, uh, your brother is just being interviewed next door. Oh, yeah, they've interviewed too. Yeah, well, just because uh, you never know, right? Any other fringe stuff that comes up, it's uh, just more of an administration. But obviously, the relevant people to be interviewed, in my opinion, right now, are who your mom was with right after like when she went to this line dancing or this dancing so we can clarify where it was and you know like I'm 90 percent sure that it's there okay it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that could she have drawn them here from where she was because of the type of car she's driving and where she's driving to it's it's very positive it's something that we obviously have to explore so how am I going to find out who she was with tonight I don't have her number to home. Um, Is there a way on your phone? My uncle. Can you use your phone to find that to find out who sh the people she was with tonight? I could ask phone one of my uncles and ask them for that girl's number. Okay. It's one I'm, of his nieces. We're gonna need. I'm gonna ask you to do that. Okay, if you can do that for us. Um, who Who are you with? What phone service are you with? Rogers. With Rogers. Okay. We're going to prepare a consent for you for the phone records, and then um, I'm going to uh, uh, give your phone back. I'm going to ask you to call what, this uncle uh, so that we can find out where, where she went, who she was with, and where she went tonight. Mm -hmm. Because we need to obviously find out, confirm where it was, and confirm who she was where and if there was any problems. Okay. okay? Um, the, the cars, how many cars, yes? Oh, thank you. Thanks. You want to check to make sure that's your phone? Yeah. Are you the, are you the owner of that phone? Are you the, uh, on, on the plan, is it under your name? Yeah. Okay. I just asked them to put uh, two initials on because I just, um, like, caller ID when I call in, it's not my name. It's, it's not your name, but it's still your phone and you use this, and right? I pay it and okay, what's your cellular phone number? Uh, 647-965-2118. Because these things come in, in, um, in batches, I'm just going to extend the time period just because it, I, I give it a from the first to the ninth because they have they may even give us more time it's just the way that the, the, the information comes off of their reading okay but I'll explain that to you I'm sorry your mom's first name B I C H separate word H -A. B I C H H separate word H A, H -A. Pan So, uh, my question.
question is how far deep into this will I look for my phone? Just like comment, like regular phone calls to people, just stuff like that? Really, it's just the time stamping of, of the, you know, we, we're putting nine days down because it may come back to you that, um, oh, I spoke to him, and it may be able for us to be able to identify people that we may need to go back and interview. The, the interest of us is obviously tonight between 9 and 10, right? Um, but we're just asking for this. We're not asking for months and months and months. It's nine days that we're asking for. And generally it's because we may come back to you and say, okay, we want to interview um, this person. And you go, oh, I don't know where they live. But I spoke to them. Or we've got the phone records. Is this the same person? And we'll have their address, at least what is registered to their phone. So it's the only reason we're asking for a nine-day period. Okay. No, investigatively, it's 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 not of no real significant value other than today, right? It's only because sometimes I phone, you know, like teachers and stuff like no, that. No, we're not going to go back and interview all those people. That's not our intention, right? Um, so I need you to fill out this portion for me. So owner, subscriber, it's the same person as this. So it's you and you, your address, the telephone number, and, um, and today's date, and then your signature. And what it is, is before we go into it, it's all, this is all being recorded again. So it's just that you consent to giving us the records for cell phone number 647-965-2118. Um, and you consent to allow the York Regional Police to access the phone records the said cellular phone company authorized Rogers for the following billing records incoming and outcoming numbers dialed registered owner information including credit and payment history this is really how we link phones to people how we confirm that it's your phone and the tower site location if requested for the above mentioned times and dates the towers now become. Uh, I just dropped that. Towers become relevant in this case because of where you are when the phone call comes in on the on today's date. Right? Is that it firms your story to saying that I was in my room when I made that when the calls came in, and um, that will show up on the tower site information. That's the relevance of the tower site information. It also may turn out that maybe during this time period, you were targeted, and you were in an area. And this it enables us to go back and try and look for cameras and other things through the towers. I'm not saying it's going to happen in your case, but it's why we ask for tower sites, right? Tower sites always show when you're on the phone, they show you where, you're, where you are when you're on the phone making calls. Um, and that the above mentioned records are to be released for the York region, to the York Regional Police for the purposes of an investigation of murder of your mom and for the time period as stated, November 1st to November 9th. This is the part of the consent. I am voluntarily giving consent, and I know that I, you don't have to. You don't have to do this. This is, your, you, this is you volunteering to do this. You may withdraw your consent at any time. I understand that these records may be used as evidence against, against me and may become any part of a criminal proceeding. Now, if you were lying on this, you know, as a part of this whole process that I explained, telling us fictitious information, it comes back. Now the records can also be used against you. If you're telling the truth, Really, point three it means nothing, okay? Um, but we have to let you know by law that we could use these against you if you're lying to us. And in consideration for Rogers uh, disc uh, Wireless, disclosing the records of the identified person above, I hereby release and discharge Rogers and its employees from any uh, liability whatsoever in regard to this closure. So this is what the phone companies have asked us to say that because we're giving you this thing, you can't use, you can't, the people who we got it from can't come and sue us. So it's a, it's a preamble, legal preamble. Um, and by doing this, by, okay, the owner subscriber, you're printing your name, you sign here, you print your name, your address, uh, your subscriber number and the date, and I sign with the witnesses to state that I witness this. And then um, I'm going to ask you after this to try and contact that cousin to get us the name of the people who were with your mom tonight.
you need the full address? Yeah, mark them. Yeah, you mark them, Ontario, just the state. Today is now the 9th of November. And I'm going to sign to witness it. So will you, will we be in, will I be informed of who of my, if anybody, if they contacted on that? Um, the chances are if you're going to be, so you, you can almost guarantee that Adrian and Edward are going to be, we're going to need to speak to them, right? Because Adrian was in your house. Remember, um, if they're doing forensic testing in your house to try and get DNA and anything else in there, they're also going to need stuff to eliminate people, right? So Adrian was in your house. Um, so we need to try and, if you when, when we shut this down, I'm going to, because it doesn't need to be disclosed on video about their personal information, I need to get... Adrian's contact information. I need to get Edward's contact information. I don't know if we're going to contact them to tonight or this morning, but sometime today they're going to be spoken to. Okay. Um, our priority is who is with your mum. That's our priority right now. Okay. Um, but I, I, I just tweak me back. How many cars do your, do your does your family own? The Mercedes and the Lexus. And where do your parents park these cars? My dad always parks it on the right. And my mom always parks on the left. Inside the garage? And when they, where do they enter the house when, they're, when they park in the garage? Is there an entrance through the garage? Okay, so that's the normal course as they park. Unless we, we plan on going out somewhere, we leave the car on the driveway instead of having to go through the garage. When you left today, left tonight after this incident had happened, did you see the cars in the garage? I did not, but I believe that one of the officers went and checked and said that the cars were still in the garage. The garage doors were closed? Yes. Okay. Um, is there any video equipment, video cameras, or any video system on you in your house? To record? No? No. Okay. Is there anything else that you can think of that might help us right now in this investigation? Okay, so I'm going to, okay, so you know what you told us has been under oath. Yes. Um, I'm just making sure, did, did you swear in a Bible? Yes. It was under oath. Um, is there anything you want to change? No. Is there anything else I should know to fully understand your statement? Okay. Suffer from, this is one of those things that people say, well, no, I'm, uh, I'm schizophrenic, I just didn't tell you, or I suffer from mental illness or delusions, or uh, I'm actually an alcoholic, and uh, I, none of these things uh, affect none you. Of those that you said. You're competent, and this was completely voluntary, and you've told us everything you need to the best of your ability. As best as I can. Okay. So, what I'm going to get, I'm going to, it is now 4 30 in the morning, I'm going to shut everything off. And then we're going to have you try and find those that, that information for us, okay? So the recordings now are turned off. I'm going to make sure that, um, that next door the recording's off. Of course you can use a washer.